119 so far? Yeah. <laughs> Two people are, that's great. <laughs> but it's got me better than the last few years, hasn't it, obviously? I mean, I didn't think it was going to get any more depressing, what with Brexit and Trump. But it is going to get more depressing, ladies and gentlemen, yes? Have you heard the latest news? Dido's just released a new album. <laughs> So we're all fucked now, aren't we? Honestly. I mean, I don't really follow politics, to be honest with you. I know the basics, like last year, was all to do with Theresa May and her dancing. Yeah. She's a bastard, doesn't she? But, um, listen, I'm not bothered about her dancing, everyone. The one thing that bothers me is the size of her nostrils. Have you seen them? Or if you've not, let me tell you. I wouldn't want to share a grammar code with that fucking bitch. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mark Dolan at the world-famous Amuse Moose Comedy Club and the home of the Amuse Moose New Comedian Award. Uh, the final is at Edinburgh in 2019, in August. And one of the finalists is with me now, very talented and funny man, it's Russell Arathun. Welcome. Welcome, thank you very much. First of all, congratulations. Thank You've you. just done the semi-final, you won. How did the gig feel? Um, really good, actually. I'm really pleased with it. I was pleased with how it went. Yeah. Obviously, everybody in the semi-final was up to like a really good standard. I know. So... Um, anyone could have won it tonight and I was really pleased to get Well, there. that's very modest of you to say, but I think you really did stood out. You were an absolute shining star. Uh, you've got a great sort of history in comedy because you sort of, you've gone hot and cold with it, haven't you? You started in 2008 yeah. with the Gong Show mm -hmm. in Manchester at the Comedy Store. Now, the comedy store, yeah. The problem with the Gong Show is that it's not really like a normal gig, is it? No, it's far but a normal gig, yeah. It's very strange. And it was my first gig, the first time in front of an audience, the first time with a microphone. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Baptism of fire. Yeah. And then I won the gong show. So then as a prize, they gave me 10 minutes on a Saturday night as my second ever comedy gig. Okay. And then ultimately that didn't do me any favour. So I went right down, didn't do any comedy for about three or four years. Then. Really? So what yeah. happened? You did those two gigs and it didn't go according to plan? No, really? no, it was completely different. Because you didn't have an act yet, right? Well, I just had five minutes. I stretched out to 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, okay. Welcome to my world. Mm. Don't knock it till you've tried it. But uh, it doesn't matter because there was obviously something in you that made you want to go back. To then the I moved comedy. to London and then got engaged. Congratulations. Uh, and then I kind of decided that I needed to carry on doing this because this is what I want to do. Yeah. So um, when did you pick it up? Um, about three years ago. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's quite, gap, really. yeah, it quite a long gap, really. Yeah, it was quite a long gap. You know, yeah. almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. All right. And so now what are your ambitions going forward? Like, do you love it now? I love it now. I did a show in Edinburgh last year. Um, which is called The Curious Incident of the Gay in the Night Time. Okay, you can't imagine what that was about. Yeah, and I am now trying to write a second hour, which is called The Notorious G-A-Y. Beautiful. So I have the poster, which is the main thing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you've got the title. Got the poster, this is... That's, that's the show. Yeah, so then hopefully in the next few months I'll be able to start running through a show which I can take to smaller festivals, and then to Edinburgh 2020. That's it. Although um, I am going to Edinburgh this year now. Recommended Edinburgh Formula for you, which is one joke and 59 minutes of crowd work. See how that goes. Yeah, that's technically what I did last year, <laughs> to be fair. So what do you enjoy more? Do you like doing material uh, for the competition? You've done your tight 10 minutes, which is all gag, gag, gag. So do you like the crowd interaction? Do you like the material? What's your preference? Oh, I love... Well, when I was doing my show last year for Edinburgh, I was doing... I scrapped a lot of material that I'd been planning for a long time just to accommodate all the crowd work that I was like learning to do. So I'd spend the first 10 minutes actually just talking to people in the audience. Nice. How has the world of comedy changed since you first had a go at it in the late noughties? Has there been a change? It was actually before the late noughties, wasn't it? Was it? It's actually the late nineties. When did you do the long show? Oh no, late, yeah, early noughties, yes. And then- 2008, was it? Yeah, and then okay. it, I'm not sure how much it's changed, to be honest with you. I think I've no. changed, but I'm not sure the comedy world's changed. And has your material changed a lot um, since your first go? There's a lot of ideas still there for my yeah. first set, yeah. And you do, I mean, you do a lot of stuff about being uh, a gay man. Mm -hmm. So, and your persona is, is quite camp, but not like wildly camp, right? Yeah, just medium rare camp. Yeah, and <laughs> that's medium rare, just how I like it, actually. <laughs> So, do you feel like attitude? How do you feel about attitudes of the audience to your orientation? I, I like to think that we've got a very liberal society now, but is that true or not? I think so, definitely. I've never had any kind of trouble with anything yeah. like that. Including outside of metropolitan areas? Um, more so, they, they love it in non metropolitan areas. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, they love to get a token gay in their villages. So. <laughs> Don't they just? Yeah. So, what about you for the future? What, what, what do you actually want to achieve going forward? Well, I would like to, to do comedy full-time as opposed to working in a restaurant full-time and doing comedy part-time. Uh, yeah. 
Because the problem is the restaurant business is very all consuming, isn't it? Yeah, but it's quite good to Long test material oh, on customers, yeah. What what uh, what style of restaurant is it? What's the cuisine? Steak and cocktail restaurant in I Chelsea. The sound of that. Yeah, it's very classy, yeah. Very Lots cool. of allergies. <laughs> right, yes, of course. Mm. Only middle class people have allergies, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> even so, our even our dog is actually gluten free. Is that crazy. right? Yeah, that's actually true. You've made it. Yeah. Got a celiac dog. That's yeah. the stuff of dreams. So wonderful. Well, look, all I want to say is really good luck in Edinburgh. Thank You've got you a gigantic much. future ahead of you. I'm yeah. your number one fan. That sounds creepy and it's meant to. Is it? Yeah. Are you going to say it again to the next person? Definitely okay. not. No. <laughs> You're my special one. Um, lovely job, ladies and gentlemen. Russell Arathun. Thank you.